We're going to continue with Chapter 3, uh, our scientific measurement chapter. Uh, you just certainly at this point should feel comfortable with scientific notation and the rules of rounding. We're now going to head in to significant figures, which is a topic that you probably have very little background information on. When you're looking at significant figures, these are really the numbers that have meaning. And the numbers that have meaning include um, all of the numbers that you've measured, part of the measurement, plus a last digit which has been estimated, either by you or by the piece of equipment. And the better your equipment reads, the better your measurement will be, and the more significant figures you will be placing in that measurement. So as we look at a typical measuring of any object, when we measure something, we always measure to what the instrument can read, and then we make an estimate. So let's say these are inches. This object would be at least four inches. That's the known part of the measurement. And then there's this part of the measurement, which is something we need to estimate. We know it's between four and five, so most people would probably say 4.5, although you might say 4.6 or even 4.4. This last number is the estimated digit. When our measuring device gets better, then our measurement needs to be better. So here, this is not our known anymore, although it is known. We also have another known reading. The piece of equipment lets us read to 4.5. Those are now the known values. And then we need to estimate. And now we need to estimate in this tiny little space. Again, we divide it into 10 equal spaces and make an estimate. So now we might say 4.55 or 4.56 or maybe even 4.54. We are going to agree these are the known parts of the measurement. This last part will have some error in it and that is our estimate. Again, the last number is that is recorded is actually an estimate, but we must record it to give the best possible measurement. So obviously 4.5 is not the best measurement we can give. We need to add that last digit, which is our estimated digit, and now we have recorded our significant figures. Uncertainty in measurement is due to the equipment that you use, its quality, and your skill as a human being in your ability to read that piece of equipment. When you're looking at significant figures, you are looking at the parts of the measurement that have meaning, and they are controlled by the piece of equipment that you have. Let's go through some of the basic rules and then we'll get a little more understanding of the meaning of significant figures. In a measurement, all non-zero digits are considered significant. They are part of your measurement. In those previous examples, the 4, the 5, and the 5 were all part of the measurement that we made off of that piece of equipment. It's only when we get to zeros that we have to worry about significant figures. Some zeros are significant. Others are just placeholders. So those are the rules that we'll focus on. If it's a non-zero digit, it's definitely part of the measurement, and it is significant. So let's look at which zeros do count. If you have zeros at the end of a number, and there are no decimal places before those zeros, then they do not count. They are called trailing zeros. They may or may not be part of the measurement, but since you did not include a decimal, we do not consider them significant. So that would have made those zeros a significant part of your measurement. If you wanted them to be significant, excuse me, you need to make sure you put a decimal. Zeros at the beginning of a number before any non-zero digits okay, are also not significant. They don't 
count. They're called leading zeros. They really are placeholders. You know you have a leading zero if you can take that number, 4.5, and write it in scientific notation, 4.5 times 10 to the negative 2. You have not included any of those zeros. They are not part of the measurement. They are simply part of the magnitude, and they are placeholders. And again, leading zeros are not significant. So, which zeros do count? Well, zeros that are in between non-zero digits are obviously part of the measurement. They do count. They are sometimes called captive zeros. So 102, that zero is part of the measurement. It is significant. Zeros at the end that follow a decimal are also significant. They do count. When you put those zeros there and they follow that decimal, you're saying that is part of the precision and accuracy of your measurement. They are significant zeros. Again, if you have trailing zeros without a decimal, such as these, then your number is ambiguous. You're not making it clear whether you should count those or not. Putting a decimal makes that clear. Also, writing the number in scientific notation takes away all misunderstanding about those zeros. So let's apply some of these significant figure rules. How many significant figures in each of the measurements? Well, look at this one here. Think about what numbers are part of the measurement and follow those rules. We know these are non-zeros, so they're at least two. Now we need to look at those zeros. Those zeros come before the one or the two, so they are leading zeros, so they are not significant, so there are only two significant numbers in that measurement. 106. The 1 and the 6 are significant. The 0, you have to decide. It's a captive 0. It's part of the measurement. So all three numbers are significant. Same in this measurement. These zeros are part of the measurement. There are four total significant figures. In this number, the 9 is certainly a significant figure. Then we have to deal with the zeros. Well, these zeros are following a non-zero digit. This zero is following a decimal. Therefore, all four numbers are significant. Here, captive zeros, so you've got one, two, three, four, five significant figures. We know that the six and the one are significant. These are leading zeros. They are not significant. This is a captive zero. It is significant. And this zero is following a decimal, but is not a leading zero. So one, two, three, four significant figures in this measurement. Your final answer when you are taking numbers and doing mathematical operations with them, such as multiplying, dividing, adding, and subtracting, your final answer cannot be better than your worst measurement. And in to decide your worst measurement, you are looking again at the numbers of significant figures in that measurement. So when you're multiplying and dividing, let's start with that, because the rules for adding and subtracting are different. When you multiply and divide, you need to round your answer to the fewest number of significant figures. To do that, you look at the numbers in your mathematical operation and you pick the one that has the least number of significant figures and your answer must contain that many significant figures. So let's look at an example. Take these two numbers and multiply them. This comes out on your calculator. In order to round this correctly, you must look at the two numbers that gave you this answer and pick the one with the fewest significant figures. The 3.6 has two significant figures. The 653, all three of them are significant. You must round to your worst measurement, which contains two significant figures. So you need to take this and round to two significant figures. In order to do that, you either have to write your answer in scientific notation, 
and there are your two significant figures, which is the best way, or you round to your, your 5 would turn this into 2400, you would leave your zeros and you would not put a decimal, which leaves you with two significant figures. Let's look at other example. If we multiply these two numbers, we've got this number containing one, two, three, four, five significant figures. Leading zeros don't count. Two significant figures. We put it into our calculator and this is what comes out on the display. We need to round this to our worst measurement which contains two significant figures. This zero does not count as one of our significant figures. This and this are our two significant figures. Look one number past to see if we need to round this. This is a four that does not change the zero point four two is the correct rounding for this mathematical operation showing us two significant figures. The rules for dividing are the same as for multiplying. We take 24, divide it by 1.23. This comes out on the calculator. 24 contains two significant figures. 1.23 contains three significant figures. We need to round to the worst measurement, which contains the fewest significant figures. Our final answer is allowed only two significant figures. If we look up here, here are our two significant figures, but we need to look one number past. The 5 would certainly round this to 20. There are our two significant figures. However, for this 0 to be significant, we need to put a decimal or write this as 2.0 times 10 to the first power. When adding and subtracting, well, now they decide to change the rules on you. Instead of looking at significant figures, when you add and subtract, you look at still your worst measurement, but instead of looking at significant figures, you look at decimal places. So your worst measurement has the fewest number of decimal places. So using that rule, Again, we would have to use this number to control our final answer because it shows only one decimal place while this contains two. So let's look at an example of adding and subtracting. We take this number, add it to that number. This comes up on the calculator. Here we have two decimal places. Here we have one decimal place. We need to round our final answer so that we show only one decimal place. So we're going to take this off. Again, before we do, we check to see if it rounds our final answer, and it does not. So 30 point, excuse me, 34.3 grams is our final answer rounded to the correct number of significant figures. So in review, we're not looking at the significant figures in our measurements for adding and subtracting. We're looking at the number of decimal places to decide the number of correct significant figures in our final answer.